the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who will your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us your servants to obtain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God had given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will arouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near, upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him comfort me, confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For I say, I bear insult and shame covers my faith. I've become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons. Because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme, blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I look for sympathy, but there are was none. For consolers, no one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of the Lord in song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, be glad. You seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, his own who are in bounds, he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, our King. You alone are compassionate with our errors. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve 
who called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I handed him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the third, first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. And he said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe! to him by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas' betrayer said in reply, Surely it's not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said it so. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the uh, scriptures today tell a story of who Christians are. And Christians are, are those who suffer, those who sing, and those who serve. That's our measurement. A reality of our suffering, uh, especially for us Catholics, we understand that suffering has meaning and that it brings about redemption. Christ's suffering, he says, join your suffering to, our, to, to mine, and it will bring about redemption. So we suffer, in, and you see it especially in the psalm, and you certainly see it in the gospel. Christ's heart was suffering, he was to be betrayed. The psalm says, you, for your sake I bear insult, and my shame covers my faith. I've been an outcast to my brothers, and I experienced his suffering. And you, you know, uh, we understand this as part of, very much part of our um, life. Um, in, in the first reading, Prophet Isaiah, I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. Now, if you ever had a beard plucked, you know it's suffering. I visited a parishioner that had a one-year-old child, and this had a fuller beard, and that child was very intrigued with my beard, and he pulled on his beard, and he pulled on my beard, and I said, my goodness, now I know what a plucked beard feels like. But the suffering that we have, uh, interestingly enough, if we follow through, we experience praise and thanksgiving. You know, when the martyrs were in the Roman Colosseum, what was astounding to most persecutors is that the Christians would gather in a circle and start praising God, start thanking God. Uh, martyrs, uh, uh, the Japanese martyrs, would praise and think and sing from the crosses as they're being crucified. So, at the end of this exp experience, in the Psalm 69, you hear this beautiful thing. After experiencing this brokenness and this suffering, what do they say? I will praise the name of the Lord in song. I will glorify Him with thanksgiving. So that the Christian suffers leads them to singing. And even the beautiful part of, uh, about um, the Last Supper, I think of the 30th verse after the Last Supper, they go singing to the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, the Halil, the praise song. That even in their suffering, the apostles, even in Jesus' suffering, they were singing the songs. So, 
Christians suffer and they sing and give thanksgiving, but they serve. And that's probably the most obvious in the first reading. We have called the uh, servant of the Lord's, with the suffering servant in, in Isaiah, these four or five places that are mentioned about what kind of servant is this. And now, Old Testament say this related to Israel, but we look back and we realize that it's a description of Jesus himself, of Christ. Christ, the sufferer, who's also the suffering servant. He serves. In Isaiah 42, it says, A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering whip he will not snuff out. That means that Jesus is very tender. He's wise. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He's gentle with those who are bruised. His gentleness is amazing. And, and also, it says, uh, I have a well-trained tongue. I, have no, I know how to speak to the weary. So he's gentle, but he also there's a tenderness. He invites people to, to uh, speak with him, to share their weariness, their suffering. The servant of the Lord is like anyone who serves God with a great sense of, I would say, attractive tenderness. That's what we are, servants of the Lord. And people want to come to us and share their weariness. A servant is somebody who's open to hear and to listen and to pray with. That's the kind of person that we want to be. Not only a person who can offer our suffering, not only a person who can actually sing in thanksgiving for what God is doing in life, but a person, then that would just be self-centered, wouldn't it? We want to be other-centered in the sense that we want to be people who invite people into our life and pray with them, being a person, a deep, kind, kind person. So the first feature of a servant is that we look in the, in the prophet Isaiah is there's an attractive tenderness. Now there's another feature that's a real beautiful counterpart. The Son of God indeed goes written of him. He's no, excuse me, it's the gospel. The Lord my God is my help, I shall not be disgraced. I set my face like flint, knowing that I have not been put to shame. There's a perseverance, an interior spiritual strength. So a servant has these two qualities a deep, a attractive tenderness that attracts people, and at the same time, a persevering internal strength that, that allows him to stand strong in his faith. It says, as the servant of the Lord says, I have not drawn back, uh, therefore I have set my face like flint. The flint is with the hardest of all rocks. He's just he's going to stand secure. I'm, I'm going to do what I'm called to do no matter what, no matter what accusations doesn't matter. I'm not drawing back. Why? Because my vindication is the Lord. Because the Lord gives me my definition. The Lord defines who I am. I can't be crushed with criticism or opposition. I can't be crushed by name calling or ridicule. I don't really care what thing people would call me. Nothing turns me down. Nothing gets me down. Nothing makes me lost in my composure. Why? Because the Lord is my strength. Zeal for your house consumes me. I know where I stand. I know who I praise. I know who I worship. So I, I think, brothers and sisters, it's such a beautiful reflection for Holy Week for all of us. Huh? While we're suffering, certainly people are suffering. And can we praise God for this? Can we thank God? Not, not superficially, but raise up the Psalms. Use the Psalms as your prayer. And then finally, just to, to, to serve each other with the servant heart of Jesus. Attractive tenderness and a deep interior spiritual strength that people can count on, that your families can count on, your friends can count on. You, we stand in the Lord together. So I just pray that, that we have a servant's heart. That's what I pray for myself today. I pray for you today that that would be the case as we enter now into the Triduum, the three holy days leading up to the celebration of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As we remember the passion of Christ during this Holy Week, we turn to the Father to present our prayers to him. For Pope Francis, may God continue to fill his heart with love, his words with wisdom, as he leads the Church in this very challenging time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected leaders, that the passion of Christ inspire them to make good choices, wise choices, to serve us as, as, uh, and to serve our government, to serve all of us as in our government, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with painful illnesses and experience God's comfort and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us today in our families, that we can rejoice in our salvation that was earned by the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ, and that we can share in our suffering, and that we can also be tender and merciful to others. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I ask you to take a moment now in your families to speak prayers that you'd like to bring before the Lord during this Holy Mass. For those prayers spoken in your home and in your hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as our hearts mourn the pain and suffering of Jesus, we trust that you will hear our prayers. We offer them in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Wash me with iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offering made here and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of your saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of your, our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exult exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Andrew our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Agnes Dei, qui tu es peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnes Dei, qui tu es peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tu es peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you'd enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. And now, as Almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death and time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Please bow your heads to receive God's blessings. Grant your faithful Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries to wait with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Latin works to the newness of life through Christ our Lord. 
Before the final blessing, just to remind you tonight at 7 o'clock, uh, Father Garrett will be uh, giving a presentation on how to pray and to celebrate the true, and even at this distance, how we can deepen our faith. And then Holy Thursday, which is the day in which we priests um, receive our call from the bishop and we celebrate the first Eucharist, uh, as the Lord celebrated the Holy Eucharist. We'll be doing a Adoration of the Sacrament 3 to 6, preparing for the liturgy that will be live streamed from the cathedral on Holy Good Friday at 3 o'clock, we'll be streaming the chaplet, and then Holy Saturday in the morning, chanting the office to prepare our hearts for the celebration. Finally, on Easter at 10 o'clock, um, we'll be singing the Easter song, and uh, we will look forward to experiencing that joy that Christ can bring into every heart, even in the midst of suffering and pain. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go now to love and serve Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wicked and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell. Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, world looking to the ruin of souls.